Welcome to this first lesson in a series of videos about organic chemistry covering the Alberta 30 curriculum. The study of organic chemistry is the study of carbon containing compounds, largely the study of molecules that lead to biological life. But there are a few examples of chemistry containing compounds that are deemed not to be within the realm of organic chemistry. And we'll take a look at those at the bottom of this slide. And they are one of the outcomes of this course that you are aware of these molecules. Uh, most of this uh, unit will focus on carbon and hydrogen containing molecules. The name for these are hydrocarbons. Okay. An example would be something like methane. Okay. We'll also look at other atoms being added to carbon, uh, such as oxygen or the halogens. So this would be either group uh, 7A or sometimes referred to as group 7. We'll take a look at these later in the second half of this course. These would be molecules like alcohol that have an OH or a carboxylic acid. Uh, the following is the list or discussion on carbon containing molecules that are not deemed to be organic, okay? not part of sort of the biological life. Okay? Most of these are ionic forms. Okay? You'll definitely see these questions or these examples on uh, diploma, diploma exams and certainly on tests. So the first carbon containing ion you need to watch out for is carbonate. CO3 2 minus carbon in this form, you will not classify it as uh, organic. Now you're not going to see uh, carbonate all by itself on a test or an assessment. You might see sodium carbonate. Okay. There's carbon, so it could be organic, but no, it's in that carbonate form. Uh, cyanide is another ionic form of carbon that's not deemed to be organic. I'll continue on the sodium theme, and you could have sodium cyanide. You would not classify that as organic. Okay. Uh, carbides are also uh, deemed not to be classified as organic, and these are metals combined with carbon. So let's take a look at just a few more examples. Uh, the last two are the oxides of carbon, okay. carbon dioxide that you have seen many times, CO2, and carbon monoxide, carbon with one oxygen. Okay. Both of these are gases, and we'll take a look at these as production or products of combustion uh, when we get into the reaction part of this unit. Okay. So that's it for this discussion. This is something you really have to make sure that you're aware of this list uh, for assessments. We're going to spend the rest of this course talking about organic compounds, both hydrocarbons and hydrocarbon derivatives. We'll start by going through different classifications or families of organic compounds, and then we'll lead into chemical reactions. So we're going to go through as an intro uh, to our families that are coming up of how exactly are organic compounds put together. And this would be uh, going back to our Chem 20 bonding. So quickly reviewing molecular bonding uh, from last year as our building blocks. Uh, we need to remember how many bonds period two elements like to have. Now how many bonds that a period two element likes to have goes back to their Lewis symbol or electro electron dot diagram and how many single electrons it has. Carbon, last year you would have drawn the Lewis symbol with four dots. It's in the fourth uh, group. Okay. The group number corresponds to how many dots out of eight would put around a symbol. And those four dots mean carbon will want each of those dots to pair up and we're always going to draw four bonds around our carbons. Nitrogen, we're not going to see a lot of nitrogen in this course, but you see a lot of it in post-secondary and a lot of it in uh, biochem. Nitrogen's group five, one, two, three, four, five dots. We have a pair and three singles. So nitrogen and anything else in that group 
we're going to draw with three bonds. Moving to the next group, uh, oxygen and anything in uh, the same group as oxygen, like sulfur, uh, would have the same pattern. Group six, six valence electrons, one, two, three, four, five, six. The fifth and the sixth valence electrons uh, came in pairs. We have two singles. So I'm referring to this guy as a single and that guy as a single means oxygen is always going to have two bonds. We're you're going to use oxygen a lot in the second part of our families. It comes up again in alcohols and carboxylic acids. Uh, next, we move to the halogen group. Uh, chlorine is my example, but fluorine, bromine, uh, iodine all bond the same way. Group seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. I ended up with three pairs and I only have one single in chlorine or any of our group seven elements. So one single means there's only going to be one bond in chlorine. Okay. And we see a very similar pattern with hydrogen and we're going to be using hydrogen in almost every example. The difference being hydrogen in the first uh, period um, only it has one electron and would only ever have up to two uh, in the first period. Okay. So first element in the periodic table, one dot, one bond. It, hydrogen bonds very similar to our halogens, just doesn't have those lone pairs. Okay. So this is what we're going to use to draw our molecules throughout this course. So I'm going to do a few examples of structural diagrams for organic compounds using our, our rules, our guidelines, our theory from last year, and then we'll start going into those classifications or families. Uh, so CH4 methane, okay. what we would have done last year and we're going to do this year is think of how many bonds each of these atoms are going to have. We're going to be talking about carbon every day, every example, and it's always going to have four bonds in it. Okay. Uh, we've got four hydrogen. Okay. How many bonds does each of those one hydrogen want to have? Well, each of them would want to have one bond. So how am I going to put this together? Well, we've got carbon with four bonds and that's why we have four H's around it. We'd always want to start with the highest bonding capacity atom in the middle and we're always going to, and this is going to be carbon consistently for this unit. And carbon needs to have four bonds. And in organic chemistry, you're going to see uh, a dash to represent each of those bonds. Okay. That dash is a, a pair of electrons. Okay. One of them would come from the carbon, one's coming from the other atom, which is a hydrogen. Okay. The end of each of those bonds are our four H's. Okay. So that's uh, how we're going to draw methane. Okay. Last year you would have used Vesper theory and remembered bond angles. That is not going to get tested again in this course, okay? but we will come back to boiling points, melting points, solubility like we did in Chem 20. Okay. Second example, a bit more complicated, three carbons now and eight H's. So we're going to have to keep in mind that same number of bonds. Every carbon has four, every hydrogen has one. We always put the highest bonding capacity in the middle. So that's going to be our H's, are going to be the middle or backbone of our uh, molecule. Okay. And we're going to see lots of rows, repeating patterns of carbons. So you may not be sure why I'm doing all three carbons in a row now, but you'll um, get more comfortable with it over time. Okay. If we think of how many total bonds are left, each of these carbons needs to have four. So our first carbon is going to need three more. Our middle carbon needs two more. Our last carbon needs three more. Now let's see, does that use up all eight? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight dashes left and that's going to perfectly match those eight H's.
Uh, so that's uh, C3H8. We'll learn shortly how to name these. This is the propane that would be in your barbecue uh, if you have one at home. Last example. Um, it's going to be a, another family we're going to look at shortly. Uh, two carbons. Uh, four H's. Now each of those carbons wants to have four bonds. And when I put four bonds around all my carbons, one bond between the two carbons and, and three more, um, we end up with six sort of bonds with nothing attached to them yet, but we only have four H's. Okay? So something else has to be going on. Okay? Uh, we've got two extra bonds where we don't have any atoms to use. Okay? When you have any extra bonds or pairs of bonds in particular, uh, two of those bonds could end up making a double bond. So the two bonds that I drew on the top isn't what's going to happen. They're actually going to connect between the carbons. And we're going to get a double bond between our carbons. Okay? When we paired up one pair of those dashes, uh, we now are left with four, and that matches the four carbons that are left. Okay? And we get a carbon-carbon double bond. Okay? And we'll learn all about the ene family. And the ene family has double bonds, where the ene family only has single bonds. So that completes this intro to organic chemistry. In the next lesson, you'll learn about uh, the names based on how many carbons you have and the part of the name based on whether there's a single, double, or triple bond. Okay? We just saw the ene tells the reader that there's a, a double bond.